Okay, guys, um, here is your next video. This should be for Wednesday, um, me reviewing unit three, lesson three. Um, hopefully at this point you have done the first video, which was unit three, lesson two. Um, for Tuesday, hopefully you did your mystery Doug video, and then this one should be for Wednesday. Um, if you're catching up on all this on Thursday, that's a great idea too but let's go ahead and get straight into it. So I have my schedule right in front of me and it tells me that we are starting on page 51, which is your probe page. So go ahead and turn to page 51 and I'm gonna do my screen share and we're gonna do the same thing, okay? All right, here we go. Move this over. Get rid of all that. Okay, so remember on your probe page, this is where you guys are pretty much going to be making a prediction. Um, and the prediction kind of just gives you an insight of what the whole unit lesson is going to be on. So this science probe is called Wind, Water, and Land. And it says three friends are talking about how wind and water can change the land by carrying away soil. Which friend has the best idea? So you have Frankie, Holly, and Casey here. Um, Frankie says, I think people can slow the changes to land from wind and water. Casey says, I think people can slow the changes to land from water. I don't think that people can slow the changes to land from wind. Holly says, I don't think that people can slow the changes to land from wind or water. Um, so who do you guys think is correct? Um, on your side, on your workbook, you probably just circled. So whether you circled their name here or circled it here, you don't have these little dots like I do because I'm doing it on the computer. Um, so this is where you guys are making your prediction. I am going to revisit this at the end of the lesson to see if your prediction was correct. And then you guys at any point can change your prediction um, as we are learning about um, water changing land and the wind changing land. Okay. Um, all right. So let me go ahead and check off that I just did my probe page. You guys should be doing the same thing on your lesson as you do each workbook page. You check it off. Um, below that, you should explain your thinking too. Um, it says explain basically who you think. So you're going to tell me who you think is correct and explain why you think that they were correct. Um, and we're going to revisit this later. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Okay, the next thing is to do workbook page 52 and 53, and then it looks like we have a video to do. It's this one. Just loading. Sometimes I we have little issues with this. Um, website. So hopefully this video, when I record the video, kind of helps anyways. Um, yeah. So this is what it looks like. You guys should basically be on page 52 and 53. You have a full picture of it. Um, let me go ahead and zoom in. The question says, how can people slow erosion down? Um, looks like there's a bridge right here, some people walking, and it looks like this is like a little slope or a hill. Um, what are these? Maybe something to think about. Um, Okay, it says, how can people slow erosion? Let's go online to check out breakwater to see the phenomenon in action. Um, this is probably a lot of you guys had the issue, I think, with this video, so this is perfect. Let's go ahead and do it. Hopefully, I don't have any issues. I keep moving this out of my way. Okay, so here is breakwater. Fingers crossed it works just fine. Okay, once again, usually the first video is just made for just to show you something, it's not really going to have sound. Okay, I'm going to replay it. As I'm replaying it, I'm going to talk a little bit. Uh, looks like we're in the middle of the ocean. Um, there's this black thing that's just kind of floating. Um, think about what just hit that little floating black thing. Um, what would be the point of this? Like, why is this there? Obviously, it's man-made. It's not something that's natural, but why would they put it there? Okay, let me go ahead and exit out of this. All right, so here is your question on page 53. It says, look at the photo, which is this one right here. 
the rows of materials are called straw waddles. And so these little things are called straw waddles. Watch the video of material in the water, which we just did. What do you observe and how do you think that these materials are being used? So why don't you talk about how the material is being used here? So the straw waddles or even the, I don't even know what it's called in the ocean, but it was something very similar. It almost kind of looked the same. Um, obviously it's a little big in the ocean, different color. Um, so on your page 53, it says that you could draw or write about your ideas or thoughts. So you could either write about this picture or the video. Um, did you know, these are always my favorite. Did you know the word waddle is related to the old high German word waddle, which means bandage? Interesting, I did not know that. So why would they have it reference the same word as a German word that means bandage? Well, um, here's just a sample answer for the talk about it. Um, I think that the straw waddles are used to stop dirt from sliding down the hill. I think that the break water is used to block water from crashing onto a beach. So the black thing in the water is called the break water, which is probably why the video is called that. Um, so it sounds like they're both used to stop something. The waddles in that first picture looks like they're used from dirt sliding down because we talked about landslides or when it rains or floods, um, the water breaks up dirt and it causes a landslide. So maybe that this is used to stop that. Or in the video break water, maybe that black breakwater is stopping those um, um, those waves from crashing on the beach. And this is something that we learned both in ELA and in science, that waves can change the earth um, through erosion and stuff. So maybe there is a point to that, okay? Um, let me go ahead and I am now gonna check off that I have completed everything for Mondays, okay? Make sure you're doing the same thing now. Um, Tuesdays, uh, work last week was your inquiry activity and remember I told you guys if you don't have the supplies at home which this one was probably a lot harder to have the supplies at home I am always going to post up the video um, I do expect you to still follow along and complete it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up your workbook pages here and as that's loading over here I'm going to upload the inquiry rewind video that you guys hopefully have watched Okay, um, so just so you guys know, I am on workbook page 54, 55, and 56, and it looks like our activity is um, hands-on to prevent erosion, okay? Um, the video is going to talk about things that we need, and it's going to talk about making a prediction. I'm going to start the video, and then I'm going to come back to this to kind of walk us through the workbook. All right, here we go. Oh, what did I do? Oh, that's okay. In this lesson, you'll explain what people can do to help slow the changes to the Earth's landscape. Let's look at the photo of the straw waddles. waddles. How do you think these waddles can prevent or stop erosion? In this activity, You'll observe how water erosion affects a hill and how a paper towel waddle can prevent or reduce water erosion. To carry out this investigation, you'll use safety goggles, a pan, sand, a cup, a spoon, a pitcher of water, a pre prepared cup, clay, paper towels, tape, and toothpicks. To complete this activity, you'll make a model of a waddle. A waddle is a tube-shaped device, usually made from straw. A waddle is placed on a hillside to prevent erosion. You will build your model to see how a waddle works. Before you begin, make a prediction. What effect will a waddle placed on a hill have on soil? Take a moment to share your prediction with your classmates, then select continue. Okay. So I'm going to go back to your workbook page and oh cool I can't okay so um, your prediction down here on page 54 your workbook page 54 it says make a prediction 
Um, what effect will a straw wattle place on a hill have on erosion? Now, erosion is um, when there's change to the earth, usually caused by wind or um, rain. Um, so if I had that wattle on some type of land, what kind of effect is it going to have? Um, so make your prediction. Do you think it's going to change the land? Do you think it's going to stop changing the land? Do you think that it's just going to be there for looks? Like, go ahead and make your prediction right now. I'm not going to show the answer. I'll show it when we come back to the prediction, okay? So if you need to pause my video to make your prediction, go ahead and do so. If not, I will go ahead and continue on with the video. For this activity, wear safety goggles to protect your eyes. Be careful with pointed ends when working with toothpicks. Mold the clay to form a smooth hill in the pan. Next, use a spoon and half of your sand to evenly cover the hill. Look at the cup. Notice the holes that are in the bottom of the cup. When water is placed in the cup, it will flow out of the holes, simulating rain. Hold the cup a few inches above the top of your hill. Have your partner fill the cup halfway with water. Move the cup back and forth across the top of the hill. What happens as the water runs down the hill? Record your observations in the data table under Without Paper Towel. To see the video again, select Replay. Select Continue when you finish recording your observations. So I'm gonna go right here. So first of all, this is where you're writing your answer because we don't have the paper towel that represents a waddle. So we're writing in, you can bullet point it too. So without the paper towel, what did you observe? Um, so I'm gonna stop it here because um, when the sand got wet, it's like a light brown color, and we know that the clay underneath is white. So when the rain was falling down, I don't know if you noticed, but the sand actually went away, and I can now see the white clay underneath. So it kind of looks like maybe it fell down this little little mountain type of thing. So maybe you want to say that you observed um, the sand moving, and the sand got wet, and it slid down. Um, maybe you want to observe that it changed the land, which it did because all the sand here did change. Um, so go ahead and write down your observation and then I'm going to move on. Next, use the paper towel to gently push the wet sand to the opposite side of the pan. Use additional paper towels to remove most of the water from the pan. Dispose of wet paper towels according to your teacher's directions. Use the spoon to place the remainder of dry sand on the hill. Now you're going to make the waddle. Roll the paper towel into a log shape. Place a piece of tape around the waddle to keep it from unrolling. Don't put the tape in the middle of the waddle. Set the waddle across the middle of the hill. Your teacher will poke three guide holes in your waddle for you. To hold the waddle in place, carefully put a toothpick down through each end of the waddle and into the clay. You may have to twist the toothpick to get it through the layers of paper towel. Put the remaining toothpick down through the middle of the waddle and into the clay. Let's observe what happens when it rains on the hill now. Hold the cup a few inches above the top of your hill. Have your partner fill the cup halfway with water. What happens when the water runs down the hill? Is there anything different this time? Record your observations in your data table under With Paper Towel. To see the video again, select replay. Select continue when you finish recording your observations. This time. Oh, let me try something. Okay. So.
So remember in that picture and even in the video that that round um, um, cylinder. I'm gonna use that word just so because it looks like a cylinder for math. Um, we learned that um, this waddle right here um, in the picture in the video it's used to stop something right so you have your little hill right here and we poured the water on top of the hill and in the previous one all the sand washed away and kind of went down to the bottom right well look right here do you do you notice anything differently i kind of noticed that here is the only spot where the sand slid down um but where did it go because i don't see it sliding down here so ask yourself did it get stopped did it move um, go ahead and make your prediction on the box where it says with the paper towel, you could totally bullet point, um, write your ideas, and we're going to continue, okay? If you need to pause and video you, my video, you can. Now that you've finished gathering data, take some time to communicate your findings. Use your data to complete the communicate information section. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the workbook pages. Okay, so... Go ahead and move on to see what they say. Okay. Okay, so now that you made your predictions in the box, let's go ahead and check out question number seven. Um, did your observations support your prediction and explain? Well, before we talk about that, let's go to my prediction. Uh, whoops, question number one. Um, so your prediction is on page 54. So make a prediction. Here's just a sample one. Um, I made a prediction of saying that I think that the waddle um, will have an effect because it's going to stop the sand from sliding down. A sample that they had was the waddle will stop some sand from being carried away. So kind of taking down the hill, exactly what I said. Um, if you have a different prediction, that's totally fine. But let's just see if what you observed does support your prediction, if your prediction was right. Okay, for question number seven, um, when I observed, I did notice that the waddle stopped the sand from going down. So in my case, my prediction was correct. Um, this one says, yes, when I poured the water on the hill with the paper towel, not as much sand moved down the hill. So their prediction was correct. Um, question number eight says, what property of the paper towel is important in this activity? So this kind of connects back to our materials. Um, we talked about, um, um, materials in the last unit. Um, so the workbook before we had this one, we talked about properties um, are stiff, hard, absorbent, um, waterproof, um, light, and there's so many different types of properties. So think about a paper towel. We even talked about a paper towel last, um, last unit anyways. Um, think about what you use a paper towel for. If I was to go and spill my coffee, I would go grab a napkin or a paper towel and kind of pick it up by like wiping it up because it soaks up my liquid that I dropped, right? So in this case, we know that a property of a paper towel is absorbent. It absorbs water, it collects the water. Absorb means to collect. Um, let's see what they said if they use the same word as us. Oh yeah, it's ability to absorb water is important and we know um, that you guys can say that it absorbs. So um, what property? I would say that the property that the paper towel has is it's absorbent or it absorbs water. Okay, um, let's go ahead and check off that we did our page 54, 55 and that we went online to obviously watch this video. Um, the next thing it says is to do workbook page 56 and 57. So go ahead and turn that. I'm going to move out of here to that next one. 56 and 57. And my end looks a little different from yours, and that's totally fine. Um, okay, page 56. It looks like it's this one right here. So before we get into this, I want to go over your vocabulary words because these are words that I would like for you to be saying. These are also words that I'm probably going to highlight or underline the definition when I'm reading. Um, your vocabulary words are natural resource, prevent and solution. And these are all words that you probably have heard before some type or another, um, but let's go ahead and get into it. Ways to slow landscape changes. Uh, let's check out this picture. Looks like it's an ocean. This big white thing is like a wave that's like crashing. This wall is here. It looks like it's man-made. How does this wall prevent 
erosion. Now remember erosion is when land changes because of water or when in this case it's water. Um, so does this wall change? Kind of think back to our ELA story that we read. I think it was called the break wall. Um, I can't remember the story. Hopefully you guys know. Um, but we actually kind of got a little preview about erosion in ELA. I don't know, it was like two months ago. Um, okay, ways to prevent landscape changes. Ocean water crashes against a coast. Coast is um, water that is by the land. So us living in California, we actually live on a coast because we're really close to the ocean. This can wear down a beach over time. Strong winds carry away bits of soil on a farm. This can make it hard for crops to grow because if there's no soil, um, then plants aren't able to grow there. Some people can prevent or stop or help stop. So we know that the word prevent means to stop. People can prevent or help stop erosion. Some methods use natural resources or things that come from Earth. Now remember, the reason why I'm kind of showing this is we talked about in ELA that sometimes when they're asking you to find um, the definition of a word by looking at context clues, if there's ever a word that you don't know and it's separated by these commas, inside the commas is definitions. So that's the reason why I'm pointing this out because this is a huge, great strategy that you can use when you are reading um, things in your reading comprehension, okay? Um, I got a little off track, so let me reread this, I'm sorry. Some methods use natural resources or things that come from Earth. So I'm gonna highlight that, hopefully you are too. So natural resources are things that come from Earth. So wood comes from Earth, it's something that's not man-made. Water comes from Earth. Um, plastic does not come from earth. That's something that's we make, right? So natural resources are natural to earth. Okay. People can plant plants along the coast. They can use, also use rocks to block the waves. Okay. So they're using, in this case, a wall. Um, I think in our ELA book, it was rocks that they use. It was a break wall. Um, and basically it helps prevent erosion by stopping the waves from hitting the, um, the coast too hard and then pulling all that sand away. Um, oh, it says go online. Wait, are we going online yet? Maybe it's, let's see. Okay, yeah, it's next. So let me finish reading this and we'll get to that online video. Sorry guys. Um, uh, ooh, look at this cool picture. Green, brown, usually when we talked about green and brown, brown is usually dirt or mountains and the green is usually like grass. We talked about this, there's some buildings and stuff. Um, oh man, Ooh, peace. Um, all right, so I am on page 57 in my workbook. Hopefully you guys are there. It says farmers plow curved rows of fields on earth. The rows help block water from flowing down the hill. So what they're doing is they're almost doing like a zigzag kind of formation. So it's not like all of the dirt will fall down at once if there's ever like a heavy rain. Farmers also plant windbreaks. A windbreak is a row of trees that help block the wind. Um, windbreaks protect the soil. Let's see, can we see anything? I don't know, on your end. Do you guys ever, do you guys see like a windbreak of trees? Like right here, it looks like there's some trees right there. It's to stop the wind from coming and taking the dirt. That's interesting. I don't know if you guys see anything else. Maybe we're going to see it in the video. All right. So now we get to do the video and then we're going to answer those questions, okay? Watch coastal erosion to learn about more ways to prevent erosion on the beach. And I'm not going to talk so you guys can. Playing on the beach and splashing in the waves makes for a great summer day. But did you know that waves can actually wear down and damage the beach over time? That damage is called coastal erosion. Today, we'll learn about the ways that people prevent coastal erosion and protect beaches. The first structure is called a seawall. Seawalls are made of concrete or steel and are built on the edge of a coastline to protect the beach and buildings that are near the beach. Most seawalls are curved to stop the waves, sending their energy back to the sea. Another type of structure is called a breakwater. Breakwaters are strips of concrete or rock that jut out into the sea and have a seawall at the end. They retain sand to help bulk up the beach and provide a calm and safe area for swimming. 
more natural way to prevent erosion is to plant specific plants on the shore. One example is beach grass. When beach grass is planted, the roots of the grass clump together under the sand to work like fingers, holding the sand in place, which helps to prevent erosion. Um, you should still be on workbook page 57. And okay, your first question says, how could planting beach grass prevent wind erosion? Remember, wind erosion is when the wind comes and it picks stuff up and it like basically takes it elsewhere. Um, that last part of the video, it showed like those those like uh, grass or twig type thing coming out of the, the sand. They said it's kind of like fingers. Well, think about what a finger does. Fingers can hold on to stuff. So how could planting beach grass prevent the wind erosion? Um, pause my video if you want to write it in. If not, here's a sample answer. The grass grows deep into the sand and it holds the sand in place. So basically it's like a hand, it holds it in place. So if you have your your grass sand, I'm sorry, your, um, your beach grass here and then all the sand is here, it's kind of like the grass is holding onto it so the wind doesn't pick up and move everything really fast. Um, it probably doesn't completely stop erosion, but at least it slows it down from happening all at once. Um, question number two says, look at the photo below. Um, ooh, mine's a little bit clearer than the last one. Um, circle the plants that are protected by the windbreak. Now, remember, windbreak is when a bunch of trees are planted together because the trees represent almost like a wall. If a wall is here, the wind is going to hit the trees, and it's not going to hit everything on the other side. So kind of think right here. Here's the trees. It's the windbreak. Um, if the wind is coming here, is all of this going to be messed up by the wind? Look at the photo below and circle the plants that are protected by the windbreak. Um, me personally, I would be circling all of this. Okay, pretty much all of this little grass area. I think that's all protected by this windbreak. Hopefully you circled something similar. Um, that's pretty cool. I like this. Um, yeah, hopefully you did that. Um, maybe you circled these little trees. I don't know. Um, and then your next question reads, why is it important for people to find solutions to erosion? Remember, solution is um, an answer to a problem. Um, so why, is, why do we need to fix erosion or prevent erosion from happening? Um, if there's erosion happening, it's going to change our earth constantly. Kind of think about houses that live on the beach. If the wind and water came in, all those houses would disappear. So why is it important that people find solutions for erosion? Um, pause my video to write your answer in. Okay, if you have an answer, this is a sample one. Remember, it's okay if yours is different. Erosion can damage land, so it can cause problems to land. Wind erosion on a farm can make it hard for gro crops to grow or grow crops. Um, so in this case, it's important to find a solution because if there's no crops, then we don't have any plants and fruits to eat, um, which then causes an issue for us for our food and what we need to survive. Um, so it's super important to find a solution because we want to make sure that we're protecting our land because the land is important to us because it gives us food and um, plants, crops, and all that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and check off on my science and say that we did page 56, 57, and we watched our video. The next thing on my to-do list for Thursday is to do page 62, 63. And it's telling us to read. Hopefully I have better luck finding this than I did in the last video. So I'm going to go ahead and just pause this really quick. Okay, I had better luck this time. Um, I am on my workbook page 62 and 63. Yours is going to look a little different from my video. Um, I'm sorry, from my screen, but I'm on page workbook page 62 and 63. Um, this should be at the top of yours with like a picture of a man on the left side. Um, it says, a day in the life of a civil engineer. Um, so this is kind of cool. This always kind of gives you ideas of like careers out there. If you are really interested, I actually think this is awesome. If you're ever interested in the science that we're learning about um, each lesson, um, they kind of give you the name of the career that you'd want to get into. So if you really, really like this, maybe you wanted to get into um, a career called civil engineer. We're going to learn about that right now. Okay, this is really awesome. Okay, um, so it looks like here's a picture. A bridge, there's some water. Um, why are they showing us this? Let's find out. Okay, civil engineers, and this is an interview with Mark Webb. An interview means that um, this person was asked a bunch of questions and they're giving their answers. Mark Webb is a civil engineer, 
a civil engineer manages construction projects, so where people build stuff. Um, these projects can include roads and bridges. They can also be projects about water supply treatment and power lines. Um, down below on page 62, um, you should see this picture. Um, let's read it and then we'll look at the picture, okay? Um, so here's a question from the interview. How did you get interested in becoming a civil engineer? And then Mark Webb responded with, my father was a paving constructor, so he used to pave roads. He brought design plans home. He made it um, a game to have me find the missing or wrong information. How fun. Um, the next question he was asked was, what skill should a civil engineer have? Um, a civil engineer needs to be a problem solver. All of you guys should be problem solvers. Um, the first step of working on a project is to understand what the problem is. Then you need to work on solving the problem. And it looks like here's a picture. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, you might need to be looking in your workbook. Oh, it's not too bad. Um, it looks like here's a man here. There's some type of pipe. Um, here's another pipe right here. So think about what comes out of that pipe. Why does it have like a type of canyon? Did some type of erosion happen here? Ask yourself that, okay? Um, ask where maybe this pipe goes. That might be kind of important. It says an old pipe caused erosion um, of the slope. So remember slope is like a hill. Mark Webb and his team designed a new drain system and rebuilt the slope. So this drain right here caused basically this whole erosion. It caused a canyon type of thing or a slope. So as the water came in, it took the dirt and it traveled away and it caused a little bit of like a canyon. So it looks like that they had to design something. They had to create a new drain, drain something that like collects the water and has a water travel elsewhere um, to rebuild so they could fix the slope, okay? Um, go ahead and look at page 63 in your workbook. Um, the next question says, what project are you proud of? I worked on a project where a broken pipe caused the erosion of soil. The soil erosion then caused a slope to fall. We designed and supervised the project. The pipe was replaced and the eroded slope was rebuilt. So it looks like they built something. Here's a um, Mark Webb uses computer models to look at many different solutions. So instead of him going to the area that needs to be fixed, he uses his computer skills to kind of design something, to come up with some ideas, see what works, and then they'll implement it. So this is like a blueprint, like a first draft before they implement it and take it into the fields, okay? Um, your turn. Oh, I asked you not to do the your turn though, okay? So I'm gonna close out of this. I'm gonna check off that we did page 62 and 63. And the last thing on my checklist is 64, 65, and to revisit our probe page, okay? Um, lesson review. Okay, so I'm on page 64, and on page 64, it says, um, explain the phenomenon. How can people slow erosion? So we actually just, they did a full experiment on a way that you can, you know, stop the erosion. Um, what was the name of this again? Let me go back. Straw wattles, right? They're called straw wattles. Um, so we learned about straw wattles being used to stop the land from sliding down. We also learned about the breakwater, which were the, the, um, the black tube type of things that were in the ocean to stop the waves from hitting the land too hard. Um, so kind of use what you learned from that or maybe even the experiment to explain um, your thinking. So in this case, on page 64, explain why the straw wattles are on the hill. So why are these hill? What are they doing? Are they, um, I'm gonna use some of my vocabulary words. Um, if you need help with your spelling of your vocabulary words, look at page 56. You might want to use words such as prevent or maybe a solution. Those are the vocabulary words from this unit, um, this lesson I mean. So pause my video if you're writing in your answer. If not, I'm going to show you this answer but that they have given me. Um, they are on the hill to prevent erosion. I like that they use the vocab word. And remember erosion is change to the land that's caused by wind or water. So they're preventing the sand from sliding down. Um, they're preventing the earth from changing by um, maybe these plants moving or whatever it is. So it's here to prevent or to stop erosion. Okay, um, as you are finishing that, let's go back and revisit um, our pro page. 
I think I have it open right here. No, let me open it up though. Okay. Here is my pro page. Um, you should be in your workbook page 51, just in case if you don't know. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go back to the question. The question said, um, three friends are talking about how the wind and water can change the land by carrying away the soil. Which friend has the best idea? So you should have chosen one friend. Frankie says, I think that people can slow the changes to land from wind and water. So he's saying that you can make changes Sorry, you can create something to slow changes to land when it's caused by wind and when it's caused by water. That is true because we just talked about um, those straw breaks or the water break. We talked about those. Um, I keep forgetting what those are called. What is it called again? Um, the straw waddles was used to stop preventing water to land. So he's correct here. Um, remember those those wind breaks those trees were caused to stop it. So Frankie is so far correct, but I want to check everyone's Casey says I think that people can slow changes to land when it's caused by water, which is true But he says I don't think that people can slow the changes to land when it's caused by wind That's not true because we learned about the wind break. So unfortunately Casey is not correct Holly says, I don't think that people can slow the changes to land from wind or water. Well, we definitely know that she's not right because we just talked about those straw waddles and those wind breaks. So um, if you didn't already change your answer in red, you should circle Frankie because Frankie was correct. And just a sample answer was Frankie has the best idea. Um, people could design ways to block the wind or block water from changing the land. And we did learn about that this lesson. Okay, we are good. I'm going to go to page 65 now. All right, page 65. This is um, a really good question. It says, a farmer is planning a windbreak to protect her crops. Which of the following should she think about when she makes a model? So remember, a model is kind of like a, like a practice run. So she's designing an idea before she actually does it. So a farmer is planning a windbreak to protect her crops. So she wants to protect it from the wind. Which of the following should she think about when she's making her model? Um, she should think about how far apart the plants and the trees are. Should she think about where to plant the trees? Should she think about the shape of the trees? Should she think about the size of the trees? Or should she think about all of the above or possibly none of the above? Um, so go ahead and choose your answer right now. I am going to go with E, all of the above, because how far um, the plants should be, um, how far apart to plant the trees. Well, think about the trees. If you're making a wall, do you have like a space between the wall that defeats the whole purpose? You need them close together. So it does matter how far apart they are. Um, where to plant the trees, right? If you're trying to protect it from the wind, then you want to make sure that it's blocking the wind and it's not on the other side of the wind. The shape of a tree, right? If I have a tree that's super, super tall, is it gonna like sway back and forth? Do I want something that's thicker, bulkier? Um, the size of a tree, I don't want something skinnier, I don't want something big to block it, right? So all of these are extremely important. So I put E all of the above. Um, am I correct? Yes, E all of the above. Question number two says, label each photo and write the method used to prevent erosion. Um, then explain how the two methods are similar and how they are different, okay? So this question right here, kind of think about here's crops and look at this, it looks like a wall. So I'm going to say that this is a wind break. Let me type it in for you so you know how to spell. Okay. Um, I'm looking right here. It looks like those straw waddles. So I'm going to say that this is the straw waddles. Doing that right. Do you agree with me? Right? Okay. Um, that's good. And then it says, write the method we did and explain how these are used. So I'm going to say that a windbreak is used to basically stop wind from changing the soil or um, to cause erosion in the plants. So it stops wind from ruining the soil. A straw waddle is used to um, absorb the water so it doesn't cause a landslide or land to move down. Um, so it's also stopping erosion. Let's check to see if I'm correct. Windbreak, yes. And straw waddle, oh yeah. Um, wind breaks and straw waddles both help prevent erosion. They protect land by blocking the wind or blocking water. Um, wind breaks block wind and straw waddles usually block the water. That looks fantastic. All right, let me go ahead and check it off. 
that is it for unit three, week three. Um, go ahead and... Okay, so at this point, um, I hope you guys like did the whole video. This was a really good review because like I said, we have our um, science test when we get back from spring break. I am also gonna make a study guide for you because you're gonna take your test on Google Classroom. Um, multiple choice, kind of the same thing that we've been doing. Um, other than that, this was like a lot of fun. You are officially done with your workbooks. Um, any pages that we skipped, if you kind of want to go over it just for fun, you're more than welcome to. The workbook is yours to keep. Um, any pages that we skip that you want to do, go ahead and do it. There's some little activities on there might be helpful for studying. Um, I do want to ask that you do not throw this away until um, after our test. You might need it because I don't mind um, you guys using this to answer the test questions. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Hold on to this. Um, hopefully your parents have picked up your new workbooks. Super important. It's the last unit. Um, this is a really good one. I really liked Earth Changes the Landscape. It talked about erosion and all those um, different ways that it changes land and everything. But that's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed the science and have a great weekend. Love ya.